Hello, Nocona High School and the community. My name is Rob Norman, and I'm the teacher of the school's broadcast class known as Tomahawk TV News. This is our first episode, and many of the students are nervous about this going out into the world. So I wanted to take a minute and explain to everyone these students have been put through the ringer this fall semester. By learning everything from the physical equipment, like the cameras, the lights, the mics, and a whole lot more than that, they've also had to practice writing and learn exactly what makes up a newscast. But most importantly, and the thing they've struggled with a lot is getting comfortable in front of the camera. I want to ask the viewers to leave some positive feedback in the comments below if you please would. Support these students along the way. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell next to the subscription button if you want to get all the latest and greatest from our newscast, our movies, our clips, uh, and anything else from the media program. Thank you and enjoy our first episode of Tomahawk TV News. Tomahawk TV News, Montec County's only newscast, coming at you from Nocona High School. Welcome back to Tomahawk TV News. I'm your host, Victoria DeStratus. And I'm your co-host, Caden Manis, bringing you the latest in local news. This week, we have a Tomahawk Sports where Blake and Paco bring you some local basketball and national football news. Following that, we have a gaming review on Fallout 76 with Gary and Brady and this week's NHS Gamer. Our weekly weather report is brought to you by that crazy Australian, Maxi Mofro. Be sure to stick around for our two new segments, Meme This with Chris XL, where Chris will reenact popular memes and have the viewers vote and suggest new memes for future episodes. Then we have a tasty segment brought to you by The Cooking Chicks, Chastity in Brooklyn, where you will get a new look at peppermint mini cakes to kick it all off is me with this week's Indian Insight. Welcome to Indian Insight. Last week, Nakona High School took their semester exams, and recently there's been some changes to the exemptions. Now students can miss two days and maintain an 80 average, or miss up to four days and maintain a 90 average. Excused absences can no longer keep you exempt from the test. How do you feel about the new exemption policy? Uh, honestly, I really don't like it. I wish it'd go back to what it was uh, last year. And what are you doing to prepare for the semester exams? Nothing really, I'm just going to wing it. Honestly, I don't really care either way. I mean, I'm not exempt from any. I've had absences. And what are you doing to prepare for the semester exam? Nothing really, I'm just going to wing it. So make sure you're at school maintaining your grades, and that's all we have for this week's Indian Insight. Up next, we have our very own Tomahawk TV Sports. Welcome back to this year's first Tomahawk Sports. I'm Paco. And I'm Boyd. And we're here to supply you with the latest and greatest sports news of the year. In local sports news, the Nakonda Indians played the Pottsboro Cardinals Tuesday night. Even though the Jason Sparkman had an amazing performance, the Indians came up short with the final score being 74-44. They also played in the Jacksboro tournament and went 4-0, making their overall record 4-3. and three. In national sports news, the Dallas Cowboys played an amazing game versus the Saints on Thursday. Dak Prescott played a great game, throwing for 248 yards and 24 completions. Zeke also had a pretty decent game, running for 136 yards and making the Cowboys' only touchdown. The victory for the Cowboys makes them 7-5, and five, putting them as a top team in their division. Now, it's time for our Sports Fail of the Week. Watch this. Philip Rivers comes back to throw. He sees an open receiver. His own teammate hits him, and they make the catch for the touchdown. Watch it again from this angle. Boom! He gets ran by his own teammate. Well, that's all the news we have for this week. I'm Paco. And I'm Boyd. Signing off for Tomahawk Sports.
Hello everybody, my name is Garrett Stone and welcome to our newest episode of NHS Gamer. This week we're doing a game that I've been wanting to play and review since last year. 25 years after Nuclear Holocaust, we're once again thrown into the post-apocalyptic wasteland with Bethesda's newest title, Fallout 76. Now, this episode will be a bit longer than most gaming segments, but I promise that it's worth the watch. In this game, you play as a dweller of Vault 76, one of the only vaults to live up to the public name it had. Containing the best and brightest men and women of the pre-war world in case of nuclear strikes in order to keep America alive. Now I'm going to start this video with what I didn't like about the game, and then I'm going to move to the more positive. So, here we go. One of the things that annoyed me more than anything is the servers. Oh god, where are you at, dude? Oh, hey, did you oh, grab a server, server crash? Disconnected. No! Oh, go forth, my son. My Spread game just crashed. <laughs> I understand this is something that's hard to keep up with, especially when someone does something stupid like launches three nukes at once, but the server strength could be better. I'd have times where I'd be standing at my trading post engaging combat with other players or something else entirely, and my game would just immediately disconnect. I even watched as my server crashed moments before me and my squad launched a nuke, which was pretty ironic since... The next game that I entered, an event was set off at our nuke target named Server Disconnected. Thank, thanks, Bethesda. Salt, salt on the wound there, guys. Back to the performance. Besides the server troubles and a few frame drops, the game ran fairly smoothly for having 24 or 25 people in one game at a time. As for the game mechanics, there were some troubles with the player versus player mechanics. One of which that any weapon over level 30 was slightly nerfed, which makes sense, but... When you put someone with a musket against someone with a pipe pistol, I, I think we all know who wins. The power armor is also completely broken. As with Fallout 4, about to jump off a cliff? Equip power armor. About to face a creature twice your level? Equip power armor. Too lazy to press a button and stab yourself with a stim pack? Equip power armor. And now, it's even better! Have a squad of death troopers chasing you? Equip power armor. Have six people trying to take over an ammo factory from you? Equip power armor. Wanted for blowing up someone else's camp? Equip power armor and you'll have the endurance of a deathclaw on buff out. Seriously, it's insane how protected someone is in power armor. It doesn't protect from something like a mini nuke, of course, but unless you have an arsenal of six muskets on standby, you have no chance of killing someone in any power armor. Well, you know, if you have an MIRV or something, then of course. Of course, fighting against players isn't really that big a deal unless you're taking a public workshop. You know, those workshops that used to take over for Preston Garvey and would eventually need your help because they're all cowards who need that Minuteman general to do something that the, any other Minuteman could have done. Well, these workshops are back, only they're about as inhibited as anything else in the game. Completely wiped out. But I guess that wipes out any kind of collateral damage, right? Wrong. Shooting or breaking literally anything in a base, accidental or not, gets you a wanted level. For those of you who don't know what a wanted level is besides the starts from GTA, when you get wanted in Fallout 76, you appear as a big red icon for everyone else in the game, and you can't see anyone else on the map. Anyone can shoot you and take the bounty on your head, which comes out of your own pocket. What happens if you don't have enough caps for the bounty? The game gives you one cap, and for the next three hours of gameplay, you do half damage to other players. Not three hours, not a continuous three hours, three hours of gameplay. Three hours where you can do literally anything except for PvP, which during that time nobody else knows you have that penalty, so you can still do things like charging people admission to enter towns, open a shop and make fun of the robot vendors with your customers, literally make someone pay you to, for them to set up their camp down in your town. Seriously, these, these vendor robots will buy something from you for like six caps and then sell that exact thing for like 110 caps. Like, did GameStop get their pre-owned buying rate from this game, or, or was it the other way around? Okay, so for all of this, it looks like it's going to be $32. Now, I did like a lot of the new creatures in this game. You have the regular Super Mutants and Death Claws, but now you have the Scorch, the Scorch Beast, Ticks, Mole Miners, Wendigos, Flatwoods Monsters, Mothmen. The list goes on, and because servers spawn enemies based on your level, if you're in the right area, anything could probably kill you. I could say so much more about this game, but I don't have enough time. I said a lot about this game already, mostly bad, but honestly I do enjoy this game for the immersion, role-playing potential, and the features that make it stand out from other Fallout games. 
I actually became pretty addicted to this game, and I always look forward to playing every chance I get. My name is Garrett Stone with the NHS Gamer. Thank you for watching. Good day, mates! It's Massive Legend here, Maxi Mofro, broadcasting you live, not really from the Tomahawk Weather Studio, bringing you weekly forecast of the weather. <laughs> to start us off, it's going to be cold. Colder than it is in Australia, because it's hot there. With the Sunday starting the week off with temperatures below 45, Monday with 49. Tuesday with 55, Wednesday with the high for the week, which is 59, Thursday with 57, Friday with 55, and Saturday ending the week with 54. Now for the weather. Back to you, Maxie. Thank you, Maxie. I'm in front of the Nakona High School on the verge of hypothermia to give you this report. There are people, no, 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 idiots wearing shorts in the middle of December on this cold, cold day. I mean, the idiots. Uh, don't take me as a believer of global warming, because I don't believe in it. I mean, it's freaking cold here. That's all I have to say. Back to you, Maxie. Thank you, Maxie. We have some reports of Sunday being partly cloudy. Monday, super sunny. Tuesday, just sunny. And Wednesday through Saturday, it will be partly cloudy. These reports are not entirely reliable. I mean, we are in Texas. That's all here. Now back to you, Maxi, with the field report. Thank you, Maxi. I'm here in not Australia, but in Nocona, Texas, to give you this report. Cameraman, look out there for me. Something's brewing out there. Did y'all see that, ladies and gentlemen, and small children of all ages? Something's brewing. It may look harmless, but it's not. Ooh, man. There could be snow, rain, hail, thunder, freaking tornadoes. That's all I have. Stay warm. Be comfy. Hug your loved ones as long as you possibly can. And I'll be back. Never. Back to you, Maxi Mofro. Shut up! Shut up! This is my time on the show! Oh, wait. Are we on? Oh, um. Thank you, Maxie. Tune in next time where I'm not here, but instead we have someone else. Thank you. I'm Massive Legend Maxie Mofro signing off. What's up? It's your boy Chris XL here with this week Meme This. This is an all-new thing we have never done before. We will be reenacting memes. This week, we will be reenacting the OSU meme. If you don't know what that is, we will be playing the original one right now. And now, for our reenaction. That was a banger, am I right? <laughs> I will be asking you for different memes to reenact each week. That was all for this week. Peace out, homies. Welcome to a new segment called The Cooking Chicks. I'm Brooklyn. I'm Chastity. This is a new segment where Chastity and I are going to try to make simple recipes while hoping we don't mess it up. And today we're going to make chocolate mini cakes. Pe peppermint chocolate mini cakes to be exact. Yum. <laughs> see how these turn out. Oof. Mine's gonna fall apart. The ingredients we're going to need are one box chocolate cake mix, three-fourth ounce box instant chocolate fudge pudding, one cup sour cream, half cup vegetable oil, half cup warm water, four eggs, eight tablespoons unsalted butter, at room temp, not hard, not mushy. Just right. Just right. Just right. Three <laughs> cups powdered sugar, two to three tea tablespoons cream or milk, not teaspoons. You don't want to mess it up like we're gonna do. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> Half teaspoon peppermint extract. Five to seven crushed candy canes or peppermint candies for garnish. So first we are going to preheat the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Because, you know, 
We're America. We have to be different. We can't use Celsius like everyone else. Wait, so what would that be in Celsius? I don't know. I'm not good at math. Okay, there may be so. someone watching that uses Celsius. Well, then they can search it up on Google. That's what it's there for. Next, we are going to combine the cake mix, pudding, sour cream, oil, water, and eggs into a mixer and mix together. But you're going to want to use an electric mixer, not a hand mixer, because uh, no one can hand mix that except maybe Brady with his meat claws. <laughs> You are going to want to mix these together for five minutes until fluffy and thoroughly combined. Scoop cake batter into cupcake tins and bake for 20 minutes. While that is baking, we are going to cream the butter with the, an electric mixer. Add in sugar and milk, alternating until thick and creamy. <laughs> thick with two C's. <laughs> <laughs> Add peppermint and, and beet on medium for two minutes. And then fill a piping bag with peppermint buttercream and set aside. Cut the mini cake thingies into two or three sections, frost and garnish. Well, that's all for this week's Tomahawk TV News. Be sure to tune in next time for more sports, weather, gaming reviews, memes, cooking, and local stories. Thanks for watching.